Hello and welcome. I am Nate Perry, Director of Student Activities here at Fisk University, and we're here celebrating the Jubilee Singers 150 years to eternity, celebrating the book release of Heritage and Honor. You are here. This is our program. You're viewing it live right here on Fisk University YouTube channel. Stay with me. We have a lot of guests, a lot of things to check out. Definitely have a great program for you today. So I'm here standing with the president of Fisk University, Dr. Van R. Newkirk. Dr. Newkirk, we're here celebrating the Jubilee Singers. How exciting is it to have this book released at a time like today? Well, it's very exciting because when you talk about history, and I'm a historian, mm -hmm. you know, people often tell your history, and they don't get all the story, but this is the real scoop. Yeah. This is the story that's told by the Jubilee Singers, by the director of the Jubilee Singers. So if you want the real scoop, you need to buy the book today. Buy it today because this is the real scoop, and we're just happy and thankful for all who've committed and worked on this book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Newkirk. You heard the man buy the book. You're not going to hear this story anywhere else but from the details of this book right here. Buy the book. Thank you, Dr. Newkirk. Hey Okay, so I'm here with Reverend Dr. Jason Curry. Pleasure to always be with you, Doctor. So he just told me that you've been here start, beginning in 19 years uh, serving the university. So you've seen a lot of different Jubilee singers come across this university. How exciting is it for this book release to be uh, being released today? Oh, this is a momentous occasion. Uh, we're extremely proud of the organization, the Fist Jubilee Singers, also the individual members, not only those who are presently in the group, but those who help to contribute to this momentous day. And of course, we love Dr. Kwame. We are thankful for his leadership and his service to the university for so many years. Right, right, right. Thank you so much. But thank you so much for that. Oh, sure. And uh, enjoy the program. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so I'm here with Doc Beasley, certainly a friend of the university. Sir, if you could please just give us a little tidbit about yourself and why you're here today. Okay, my name is Doc Beasley. I'm a longtime supporter of Fish University. Uh, my family went here, my aunt, my great aunt went here, my sister went here, my cousin went here, my wow. uncles went here. So we have a great tradition here at Fish University. I'm also here to support um, Doc as well as Shannon Sanders. Uh, Shannon Sanders is one of my longtime friends as well. He's also the producer of the Fish Jubilee album yes, that recently won a Grammy. Yes, so I'm very excited to be here, excited to see the new book that they're putting out. Again, because as you know, reading is fundamental. It is. And Fisk oh, has is. long time been one of the trademarks or gold standards for singing in Music City as well as education in Music City. And I'm excited to be here and especially excited to meet you, my brother. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doc. Take care and you enjoy the program, yes, sir. I will. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, I'm good man, appreciate it man. Please go kill it. Please go kill it.
heard. And I'm going to ask you how excited it is to be dropping this book today. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm standing here with proud Fisk alum, Mr. Terrence Hurd. Mr. Hurd, how exciting is it to be dropping this Heritage and Honor book today? As, as a Fisk alum and a Jubilee singer, I'm very excited yes. about it. You know, being a Jubilee singer is one of the things I'm very proud of in my, in my career. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So there's a lot of things to look forward to in the book. I'm sure the lineage is very long and lengthy within the book. So you, you probably got a page in the book, right? I don't know. I have not previewed the book or anything, so I'm excited to see it and see what's in it. I will say my class is very unique in mm -hmm. that we were here when the heat got cut off. Oh, wow. So as a Jubilee singer, we really felt like the original Jubilee singers <laughs> going out to save the school to get the heat turned back on. Wow, yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you for your service and your dedication to the university, sir. We really appreciate oh, that. Right. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, and you enjoy the program. Wonderful. Thank you. So now I'm standing here with Ashley Howe from the Tennessee State Museum. Ms. Howe, can you speak on any relation that the Jubilee Singers may have with the Tennessee State Museum? Well, we definitely, in the collection of the State Museum, tell the story of the Jubilee Singers. Because we, when we talk about history, Jubilee Singers are very much a part, not only of Nashville's history, but this country's history, the state's history. And so we wanted to tell that story, and it's why we're here today, to be able to, to talk about the history of the Jubilee Singers. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Howe, for being a part of the program today, and you enjoy the festivities that we have going on today. All right, thank, All right, thank you. So Huh? Yeah, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Right, let me see if I can get it. Oh, excuse me, man. My bad. I'm sorry. I mean, you know. I'm standing here with 
I'm standing here with Big Molly Mall. What's happening? We in here, you know. <laughs> All right, Dr. Owens. So, uh, I guess I could ask, uh, what was your take in? What was your part in? Okay, now I have with me Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs and the Dean of the Library, Dr. Brandon Owens. Sir, can you tell me about what part that you played in bringing this book to life? Oh man, uh, let's see, I worked on Era 1 and Era 2. Um, a lot of it was tied to my dissertation on the history of Fisk University Library. Okay. Um, so the Jubilee Singers, a lot of people don't know, they played an integral part in creating and establishing our library. So when they're traveling throughout Europe, they received a lot of book donations um, from kings, queens, and chancellors um, that were donated to our library. And some of those uh, books are still in our, our collection today. Oh, wow. um, also, some of the um, first donations that we still possess in the library as far as artwork were basically results of their travels and fundraising. So a lot of the fundraising was not only just funds and cash, but also book donations. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So there's a lot of history in the book. So please, everybody, make sure that you buy the book. We're going to be sending the link out. Purchase the book, Heritage and Honor. Thank you for your contribution to the book and bringing it to life, Dr. Owens. And you enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you so much.
alumni and now staff member, Ms. Delisa Harris, who is the Assistant Director of Library Services, yes. who made a major contrib contribution as well, excuse me, uh, to the book, Heritage and Honor. So Ms. Harris, what was your contribution to the book and bringing this to life? Yeah, so I was one of the writers, editors, and um, I contributed material from our uh, special collections and archives, photographs, um, scans of programs, things like that, and bringing context to the story. Wow, wonderful. So after all them long nights, long days, getting data in, getting different books together, and getting different things, getting it to the printing press and getting it brought to us yes. i'm sure it's uh it's wonderful and exciting to see everything brought to life yes. and very exciting time thank you so much for your contribution and we'll see you in on the program all right thank you all so right much. thank you <laughs>
Okay, so I have with me my man, alumni Jubilee singer Jeff Casey. Uh, man, I've seen you grow, man. Uh, from, I believe I came here, started working here, you might have been a sophomore, now you're graduated. You're done, man, but you're still a part of the Jubilee Singers, still giving back, uh, working and serving with the group. How exciting does it be a part of this book release today? Man, I'm just so excited to be one a part of the Jubilee Singers as an alumni, but as well as this book release, just to, to continue the history and the legacy of the Jubilee Singers through, through literature, through song, just tradition. It's just amazing. Okay. So now you got to tell me, what does it mean to be a Jubilee Singer? You know, not everybody in the world can call themselves that, but y'all are so respected, so well established and esteemed, and you have that title. I'm a Jubilee Singer. What does it mean to hold that title? To be a Jubilee Singer truly is to be a servant for others, to, to always be humble, remain humor, humane, humility, and uh, just to sacrifice at all times, just making sure that you're doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Wonderful, man. Well, you've definitely been an epitome of that. Thank you so much. We're about to start this program. We'll see you all in a bit, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. of our hearts to the depths of our souls we give thanks to you for all that you have done for all that you are doing for all that you shall do in the life of this beloved university community it is on this day that we pause to say thank you dear lord we give thanks for this celebratory moment in the life of our fisk university community we thank you, O oh God, for each and every Fisk Jubilee singer who helped to a full day into fruition. We thank you, O oh God, for our beloved director, Dr. Paul Kwame, and for his 28-year tenure of service and leadership to Fisk University. And lastly, O oh God, we thank you for each and every friend, each and every partner, indeed those who support the mission of this beloved institution so that we might see this present day. Dear God, we ask that you would continue to bless us and keep us in the hollow of your powerful hand. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Curry. Can you all hear me okay? So normally I do not read my remarks, but today I'm going to because it's a very special day as we honor uh, the legacy and the heritage of our Fisk Jubilee Singers. I'm going to start with by saying, ever since I was a child, these songs have stirred me strangely. They came out of the South unknown to me. And it, yet, at once, I knew them as me and then of mine. Then in later years, when I came to Nashville, I saw the great temple build it of these songs. To me, Jubilee Hall seemed ever made of the songs themselves. Its bricks were red with the blood and dust of toil. Out of them rose for me morning, noon, and night. Burst of wonderful melody, full of the voices of the past, full of the voices of my brothers and sisters. William Edward Burkhart Du Bois, The Souls of Black Folks, 1903. I'll start with that because I want to acknowledge the building that we all stand in as the house that the Jubilee Singers built, often known as Frozen Music. I would also like to follow Dr. Curry in wishing and expressing our deepest gratitude to the many singers uh, that have performed as students at our dear institution. With that, I'm going to pause and open the program to let you know about what we're going to experience today. So first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to hear from Dr. Kwame, uh, and the Jubilee Singers are going to perform great day, followed by greetings uh, from the president 
and then remarks, and Dr. Curry will do the greetings from the president, and then we'll have uh, remarks, we'll have a video presentation followed by remarks from Tunisia Scott, uh, Tunis Fleming, Delisa Minor Harris, Shannon Stan Sanders, and Dr. Kwame. And then we'll unveil the thing that we're so excited about and that we're here today to celebrate the heritage and honor publication for the Fisk Jubilee Singers, a special presentation, and then we're going to conclude the program with Oh Happy Day. Again, thank you all, sir, very much. I want to call upon Dr. Kwame. Thank you.
Good afternoon again. Dr. Van Newkirk, the president of Fisk University, uh, was present earlier today, but unfortunately, as a result of a pressing matter regarding the institution, he could not be present. However, he has prepared remarks and he would like me to share them with you at this time. This is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And rejoice we should. After all, we are here to talk about the world-renowned Fisk Jubilee Singers and the release of this commemorative book. As a historian, so often we talk about projects like this book, and it is a project written and a story told by someone who has little affiliation to the groups in which they write about. Hence, they often miss many important nuances. However, this is a project that has been spearheaded and led by our dir director, Dr. Paul Kwame, and the Fisk Jubilee Singers as, and as they say in Hollywood, it is the real scoop. And if you want the real scoop, I urge you to purchase a copy now. I want to thank everyone involved in this project for it means so much to me and to the university as we chronicle the legacy of the giants who have made this group throughout history. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Dr. Van Newkirk, President of Fisk University. Thank you. Since the Civil War, Fisk University has been a beacon of hope and a testament to the power of possibility. Her sons and daughters have, for more than a century, stood at the crossroads of history making in the city of Nashville, state of Tennessee, American nation, and world. No single ensemble has embodied Fisk University's spirit better longer and more widely than the Fisk Jubilee Singers, who now in their 150th year have given us yet another gift, heritage and honor. Scott and I am the CEO of T.O. Scott Publishing as well as Tanisha Scott Consulting LLC. And it's been a pleasure to be on this project. I wrote myself some notes. Um, I hope you don't mind that I read them um, because this is an emotional moment. Uh, I feel like I'm in the playoffs. This is overtime and we're in the last five seconds and we just shot the final shot. So, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Vince Lombardi, that's a favorite quote of mine. And I chose that because 
this project we call excellence. July 2020, Marie Suen introduced me to Dr. Paul Kwame. During the first meeting, I think Dr. Kwame and I would agree when I say that God ordained that meeting. I sat at the table of the 150th Anniversary Planning Committee, August 2020. It was just a hope that we create a book. I have always been a go big or go home type of person, so I always envisioned the big picture. Once the project was approved May 2021, we put our heads down and went to work. Dr. Kwame and Delisa and some additional writers, we tirelessly went to work on the content. Sleepless nights, literally 18 hour days, a pandemic, national delays, et cetera. Every possible, every possible deterrence that you can think of tried to stop us, but we all kept on pushing. This is one of the greatest projects I know I will be on. And I know that because this is just simply the beginning. I will be on many projects, but this one means a lot to me. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future. This project is history about legacy, and I am forever grateful. I want to thank my Heavenly Father first, because without him, I know I wouldn't be here at this moment. I would like to thank my husband and my three sons, extended family and close friends, I appreciate you all. On this project, on a project of this magnitude, it has been a serious sacrifice of love. They have had to put up with me through all the blood, sweat, and tears. To Marie Suing, you will never know how much I appreciate you for believing in me and introducing me to Dr. Kwame. Dr. Kwame, you exude greatness. Those who get the pleasure to work with you because of who you are, there is nothing we would not do to help you. You are truly greatness personified. To the, to my, to the team of Tanisha Scott Consulting and T.L. Scott Publishing, the sales team, editing team, design teams, Dynamark, Bindtech, Mighty Color, etc., thank you. But I brought this young lady up here with me because I couldn't be here without her. Her name is Tanissa Rice, and it's a special, special thank you to her. She's my creative designer. She flew in from Texas to be here. It's ten, her name is Tanissa Rice of Visual Chronicles, and I asked her to stand up here with me because I could not have done this at all without her. She is not only a colleague, she's a dear friend, but the best, one of the best designers I have ever seen or worked with and it is an honor to work with her. I could not have done it without you. I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart when I say it's an honor to work with you. We are proud of this project, and we thank you for being here to celebrate with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, thank you all for coming out today and celebrating uh, what has been truly a labor of love. Um, I want to uh, first thank Dr. Kwame for including me in this project, for believing in me, um, and recognizing something <laughs> in myself that I may not have saw or seen. And so, um, thank you, Dr. Kwame. For me, it was important to tell the full story of the Fisk Jubilee Singers. We, um, were we, we did celebrate 150 years of the group, and there was a lot of, um, there's always been a lot of writings and um, histories done about the first original group, but not a lot of talk and not a lot of um, recognition for the later groups. So for me, it was important to utilize the special collections and archives of our university. These collections not only tell the full story of the group, but they let you in on a little secret. 
a secret of faith, the secret of hope, the secret of believing in an institution when no one else would, believing in yourself, sharing that message with the world. So I wouldn't be up here without thanking my library staff, our dean, our special collections and archives team, um, and everyone who has thought, hey, the library or special collections might want my photographs <laughs> or my collections. You, you don't know what it means to have this documentation to tell the full history, the full story of this group. And it's not, this is not the last time you'll see this story. It'll keep continuing. And I also wanna say to you today, please support the group. Please support Dr. Kwame, um, as well as our special collections and archives, just a little plug, um, because without this, we wouldn't have a lot of the information that we need. Um, and so thank you again. I'm so happy that this is out and done. Uh, Tanisha, thank you for your leadership and showing us how a book is made, <laughs> giving us insight and direction. Thank you again, and I'm so excited for you all to see our finished product. Good afternoon. My name is Shannon Sanders, and I'm a proud three-time Grammy Award-winning songwriter, producer, and I'm executive director of creative at BMI Nashville. But none of that matters. Today, I have the great honor of introducing the man of the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a giant among us. It is impossible to walk around the campus of Fisk University and not step into the footprints created by the giant. And who is this giant? His name is Dr. Paul T. Kwame. He moved to Nashville in 1983 from his native Ghana to study music here at Fisk University. He himself became a Fisk Jubilee singer. Since being named musical director of the Fisk Jubilee Singers 28 years ago, Dr. Kwame has taken on this responsibility as his life's mission. His passion is evident in his careful instruction, which has led the singers to tremendous heights, performing for presidents and royalty in some of the world's most iconic music venues, and most recently, winning the first Grammy, becoming the first ever Grammy win by an historically black college and university. If asked to introduce himself today, he would do so quite humbly. Dr. Kwame's impact on Fisk University, on our city and state, our nation and the world is nothing short powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the microphone a father, a husband, the music discipline coordinator at Fisk University, the musical director of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, a living legend, and my friend, the giant, Dr. Paul T. Kwame. Thank you very much, Shannon. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming to join us here this afternoon. It means a lot to me to have you here. Uh, the success of this project, I can surely say, has been by the guidance of God. When the 150th anniversary committee met, we talked about various projects, various activities, and then we talked about the importance of writing and publishing a book. As Delisa said, most people write and talk about the original singers or the 1873 group. But then there has been a gap 
and who should write the story and fill in the gap rather than people at Fisk University, members of the Fisk University family. So when we talked about writing and publishing this book, I first thought this would just be maybe a 10-page book. I thought it would be something we could finish in two months, but no. It has not been an easy road. It has not been an easy journey. Um, I am very grateful to Tunisia Scott. She's not a graduate of Fisk University, but she knew the value of the Fisk Jubilee Singers and the importance of writing this book and producing a top quality book. So along the way, we worked, as she said, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I had to put things aside and then later on find a way to catch up with my responsibilities. Honestly, there was a time uh, as we were working on this book, I wondered if I should quit. But today I'm glad I did not quit. I'm glad I had people like Delisa, Dr. Owens, uh, Tunisia Scott, and other people, some who I don't even know, who helped us. One thing I can say about this book is I don't think I have any uh, Fisk administrators here, but one thing I can say about this book is that it is a symbol of Fisk University's prosperity. And the reason I say so is when we talk about the history of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, from 1871 until now, we've had several directors, we have had several FIS students who sang in the ensemble, and they were not only music students, they were students from various disciplines. Then we have faculty and staff helping, for example, if we needed to take students out for performances, faculty had to agree. So I see this book as a symbol of Fisk University's prosperity. And I use the word prosperity because it is a top quality book, which should put us in a position to continue doing great things because this institution is one of the greatest on this earth. Um, I would like to thank members of the 150th Anniversary Committee who are here. We have Terence Head here. We sang in Jubilee Singers together. We have Erika Dattis. She was one of my first singers. And uh, we have Kim Fleming also here who has become my baby sister. Uh, in closing, I want us to remember this, that when we decide to do good things, let us never get weary in doing well. Had I gotten weary, this day would not have been here. I would have canceled the whole thing. But today, I am rejoicing and celebrating because I never gave up, because of you, because of Tunisia. So again, thank you for coming here this afternoon and uh, make sure you get the book. And also sh buy books and share with people. It is a story like you've never heard. Thank you.
Several years ago, um, we realized that not much has been written in terms of the history of the Fist Jubilee Singers since sometime in the 1800s. So we discovered there was a gap uh, of information from the 1800s to the present. As a result of that, the 150th committee uh, decided that FIS should take on this project and write the story of the FIS Jubilee Singers from 1871 to the present, which at that time was 2021. There are several texts about the FIS Jubilee Singers out there who have kind of talked about that original group. You know, their first tour, their second tour in Europe, and then their third tour in Europe. Really, this book speaks to the group beyond um, that certain period, the original group. It goes into what happened after. This publication was a true labor of love. We started out just with the committee of the 150th um, commemorative year, and we decided that a book would be a great asset to be able to bring along on this journey. And so we had nothing. We didn't have anything created. We didn't have any pre-content created. Everything was done as we progressed with this time frame. This book, Heritage and Honor, it should be used in classrooms. It should be used in homes. Uh, coffee tables as art. Um, it really um, supports a range of activities. Um, and I think in this time in our country when you hear so much strife about teaching our students histories, I think that this book would play a, a major role in educating all students about a group um, who fought adversity, who saved an institution, um, and paved the way for hundreds and thousands of African-American students to be educated. This will broaden their legacy. This will allow more people to have more information. This will allow us to get this information into the National Museum for African-American Music or the African-American Museum in D.C., um, the Smithsonian Museum. So this is just a great asset to add to what everyone already knows. Capturing 150 years in a book, a 200-page book, um, is quite difficult. There were a lot of late nights. Um, Dr. Kwame, Delisa, some of the writers, my team, um, a lot went into the project. A lot of love went into the project. We wanted to have something um, for generations to come that is reflective of the last 150 years. I am very, very satisfied with this product. And I'm satisfied because of the quality of book that has been produced. And I personally see this book as a sign of prosperity or a symbol of prosperity for Fisk University. People will see this quality book and I'm sure they'll be surprised. Are you ready to see the book? Ooh, uh, <laughs> it's beautiful. I know you're waiting. On the count of three. One, two, three.
I don't want you to go far, Dr. Kwame. I wanted to give something to Dr. Kwame, but I wanted to say to you that you are just a beautiful reflection of God's grace. Your faith is infectious. I pushed myself to new heights and new levels because I wanted to make you proud and finish this product. I wanted it to be representation not only of the Fish Jubilee singers, but also of your legacy and your greatness. And I thank God for the opportunity to know and work with you, and I hope I made you proud. And this, if when you purchase your copy of the book, is in the book, and this is my favorite two pages. And it says, an enduring legacy. When every star refused to shine, I will go, I shall go, to see what the end will be. Dedicated to Dr. Paul T. Kwame, presented by T.L. Scott Publishing. Printed in the program uh, is the song, Oh Happy Day, but this morning the singers and I decided to sing a different song, Rise, Shine, For Thy Light Is A Coming.
Union for coming, and please purchase the book. <laughs> First of all, this username and password does not work. Of course. <laughs> and it's a different, that's a new computer. This computer went up here. Thank you. 